If you own a cell phone, you need to watch our next story, especially if you're a parent. Like many, you're probably unaware that drugs have become freely available on popular mobile apps. For the more tech savvy, those people near me functions on apps open a world of sinister possibilities. Derek joined elite crime fighters crossing into this murky world. Get down. 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 Put your hands up. It's Centurion Pretoria mid-November. Police are cracking down on a crime syndicate that's been sprouting right under our noses, in our homes, using social media platforms and cell phone apps to lure innocent victims into its trap. This story starts about two years ago, just before the COVID pandemic hits when a businessman, a concerned citizen, opens the load-shedding app Escom's a push and notices it's not all about load-shedding. Our concerned businessman discovers that the app Escom's a push, meant to help communities connect around shared interests and information, is being used as a trading room for illicit goods. On similar apps with community chat forums, the businessman even spotted sellers boasting about the quality of their weed offerings and saw obscure menus of prescription and illicit street narcotics with names like snow, lollipops, shrooms. It soon became clear that where most of us would use these apps as the developers had intended, there was a world of criminal operators who'd hijacked platforms for their sinister agenda. Is there a problem, Charles? Yes, how can I help you? Clicking on the Ask My Street function on Escom a push, our businessman ordered whatever he could, Dacher that shouldn't be sold like this, and Cat, a synthetic street drug. Dealers are quick to take the conversations off the app and onto private text. We set up a hidden camera to see if the businessman's deal would pay off. I saw your post on the Escom app. If you got kit? Yeah, I can make it for 200. Come up, but yeah. Bring me five. Okay. Are you sure you're coming now? I don't want to wait for nothing, eh? No, I'm coming. The goods arrive by motorbike. I just bought this from a dealer. 2,000 grand's worth of kit. It's a well-known street drug. It's 200 rand bags, so for one gram you pay 200 rand. It's a thousand rand that is in for the For that uh, packet, packet, eh? Yes, for the whole packet, thousand rand. An undercover policeman confiscated the drugs and logged the deal as part of the ongoing investigation. In his online trawling, our businessman had encountered a young woman we'll call Charity, who'd grown up in Joburg's Alexandra Township. My mom passed away when I was still young. My father, I didn't know anything about him. I was raised by my aunt. With minimal parental input in her life, Charity was desperate for friends. One day, she nicked her aunt's phone to create a Facebook profile. She chatted on the old messenger app, Mixit. I started inviting friends. And there was this other girl at school. She was big. She was in grade 11. And then she started like being friends with me on Mixit. Every time when I go to school, she'd be like, come, come sit with us. Her new friend soon invited her to a party, the affirmation she was yearning for. Once there, something felt off. For one thing, some guys were older and spoke in strange accents. They wanted to give me alcohol, I said no. And then they insisted. I got drunk. We were dancing and dancing. Another girl called Charity into a bathroom. Took out a small pack, a bag. I didn't know what it was. The next thing when I wake up, I'm in a strange room with this guy. I don't know really what happened, but something happened. 
The man had raped her and threatened her not to tell anyone. The drugs did their quick and devastating work. Soon her new dealer friend helped her get more. And then she introduced me to those guys again, Nigerian guys. And then they told me if, if I can bring small girls like me to them, I'll get more back for free. Charity became a runner with a sales target to reach. If she ran into debt, they'd make her pay it off in other ways. I'll sleep with them, their friends. And people will come and say, I want you to sleep with that guy. In Sunnyside, Pretoria, we met another young woman we'll call Faith. Now 18, she was also befriended on Facebook and invited to a party. I felt dizzy that time. And then I slept. When I woke up, I found my panty with blood. I was feeling pain. I was raped. And you were just 13? <laughs> yes, I was only 13. They took away my virginity that time. How did you feel? I felt guilty because I didn't tell my mom the truth. I told her that I'm going to sleep at my friend's. I didn't tell her that I'm going to a party. I kept on using drugs because I was trying to put the guilt away. No matter how many stories I've done, many involving children, I just don't think I've been as upset as interviewing those two girls. Our concerned businessman felt much the same way when his world collided with Charity and Faith's online. They'd been dealing for five years already. Hoping to help them, he turned police informant and helped kickstart a top secret investigation into the criminals using social media and apps as their sales platform. The operation stretches across country boundaries and private business. We've seen some really horrific scenes, um, which is, is heart rendering. We have come across some children as young, as you said, 12 years old, younger yeah. than that. Captain Dave Miller is the police spokesperson. From our investigation, we've been able to establish that around about 10 to 15 odd years, they've been building up their networks. And with the boom of social media, every second child has got a tablet, has got a cell phone, um, has access to the internet. The team found they weren't dealing with the odd individual looking to make a quick buck, but an organized network that could provide their informant illicit goods from firearms to drugs to pornography, grooming children to do the drug trafficking and be trafficked. Remember, this type of crime is high profit, low risk, and it's very anonymous. Psychocriminologist Professor Christian Besaitenot I think the big thing that happened with drug dealing now online is that the risk towards the seller has reduced. The risk towards the buyer has increased. Now the seller can be picky. He can follow people for a long time on social media. Investigators followed the anonymous online cat and mouse games between faceless personalities and saw that the online deals needed real-world wheels. E-hailing services are a lifeline for Carlos City commuters, but these apps in the wrong hands allow drugs to be delivered at your doorstep. So they love using uh, Uber, Bolt. That's the way they get to you. Nobody's going to suspect Uber. For years, nobody suspected charity or faith as they courier drugs around. And now they use these children because they're not responsible. The police are not allowed, according to the law, to apprehend and to process the child up to prosecution under yeah. the ages of 12 years. So it's a non-risk for this person to use the child as a runner. It was brutal. They were invited to a so-called party. They were plastered with alcohol and drugs, and they were raped. Yep. That's also a typical process of what some of the human traffickers do. It's brutal. And then they've got it. Fake profiles, jumping between social media platforms and using emojis to fool moderators. 
It seems that criminals are having a field day in cyberspace with little to no consequences. Pretoria University professor Sizwe Snail Kamtuze has just written the definitive textbook on South Africa's cyber law. With social media comes the phenomenon of anonymity. But trust you me, you are still leaving a forensic trail. If they do want to track it down, they most probably can. And this team really wanted to. Slowly but surely, the evidence mounted. Then it was D-Day, a sting operation to remove selected runners to further the broader investigation. Runners who'd unwittingly been talking to a police informant for months faced the moment of truth. A search of the car yields a bag of mandrax. I'm just a Uber driver. I, I had a client who said I must come and drop something here. What is this? No, that's for my. You see, everything is for you. Everything. No, no, honestly. Everything speaking, I know is nothing, yours. Guys, truly speaking, I know nothing you found about this. What yeah, is the you are under arrest yes. for the possession of drugs. Yeah. Investigators take personal and work cell phones together with drug evidence. But runners are clearly only a start. The big question is, what will app creators do? Social media lawyer Diana Schwartz is also a child rights activist. In cases like Faith and Charity being uh, recruited on a social media platform or app, could the owners, directors, developers of that app be prosecuted? They can be if they had knowledge of the circumstances that were occurring on the site and they did nothing about it. So if they are made aware of this app being used for drug running and they don't remove the content, they are guilty of a crime. Yes, certainly they are. None of the companies whose platforms are being used would speak to us on camera. But in a statement, Uber said they were concerned because children under 18 have to be accompanied by an adult on rides. Uber met with the police after our request for an interview. Both said they worked hard to keep their platform safe and acknowledged it was difficult for a driver to identify a minor without asking for an ID. They said they'd cooperate with the police. As for ESCOM's push where the deals had started, its developers said they weren't aware of the activity on their platform, but were always taking steps to improve the app's automatic detection mechanisms and encourage users to report illicit or explicit content. But will it pay off? For our businessmen who helped Faith and Charity escape the syndicate, there's no time to waste. This is an ongoing war. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms, so be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.